Hey everyone, so for today's video, I am going to be talking about a bunch of glowy primers that I have in my makeup bag. As many of you all know, I do a lot of buy this, not that kind of videos on my channel, and typically those videos are just comparing one product to another product. Recently, in my brain, actually over the last couple of months, I've been going down this rabbit hole of glowy primers. A lot of brands have been coming out with products similar to something like the Hollywood Flawless Filter. So naturally, I like to pick up those products, do comparisons for you guys. I myself really like to compare formulas and textures and in general, comparing products is super interesting and fun for me. But again, I would start to try one product and it would remind me of another product and another product and that product would remind me of another product. Now I know I'm using the word primer kind of loosely here, but you know, just suspend your disbelief for a moment on this glowy product journey. I know a lot of these are hybrid and actually that's kind of what excites me about them. I actually recently went on live stream and I kind of talked about this with you guys. You guys were super helpful. I asked if you would like to see a buy this not that glowy primers and you did. So instead of just comparing one product to another, I'm going to be comparing a bunch of different glowy primers for you in today's video. Really, there is something for everyone in this video. There are primers good for dry skin, oily skin, for those of you that want a really pearly finish, for those of you that don't want a pearly finish, if you want a tint, if you don't want a tint. I actually have done a huge video on like glass glow primers. I will leave that link down below. I have a lot of glowy primers. So if you don't see one featured in this video, it's because I didn't feel like it was related to these, if that makes sense. If you enjoy the video, if you like this, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I love doing these videos and I just want to make sure that um, you guys enjoy them as much as I do. Let's just come right out of the gate with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Follows Filter. I want to talk about this product because in the family tree of glowy primers, this is a product that I do feel like has inspired a lot of other products. It's kind of that touchstone too, because I think a lot of people have tried this one, but I would say that the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter is something that I would categorize as a pearly finish glowy primer. It does have a sheen that comes naturally from the texture, but this does have a pearly finish. It also has a tint to it. It comes in 12 different shades. It is a little bit more on the pricey side as Charlotte Tilbury is, but I think the reason why this product has inspired so many products after it is that it has a gorgeous balance between giving a little bit of a filtered look to the skin while also giving a highlighted effect. What I actually truly believe this product to be the best at doing is just giving you the most natural looking highlight. You think about glowy skin, like the way your skin naturally glows, to be able to have a glow product in a skin tone color is going to give you an extra natural look. But what the brand has been able to do is to amp it up just a bit to be able to also get a highlighted effect. Now, I know that you can also use this under foundation mixed into foundation, but the reason why I'm talking about this more so as a highlight product is I personally think that that's the best way to use this product. Alone all over the face with like concealer on top, I think is pretty, but because this does have pearl to it, I am not as likely to use a product with a lot of pearl in it all over my face. I tend to think that that can exaggerate texture. Now, this doesn't really exaggerate texture, but I do think that this is able to just give you that really airbrushed, flawless looking highlighted effect on the tops of your cheekbones, down the nose. I just think that this works the best as that. Now, that being said, mixed into foundation, it looks gorgeous as well. So in the scope of glowy priming products, I would say I don't think that if you're looking for a glowy primer, this is going to be your best bet, though I still absolutely adore it, but just, you know, not for that purpose. Well, next we had a little product from Maybelline that released. Everyone was saying this was a dupe. This is the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector. I actually have done this comparison before in my save and splurge video, so I'll leave that link down below if you want a more in-depth look. But what I touched on in that video is that this is not a dupe 
product. I do, however, understand why people are making the comparison. I know a lot of you guys already know this about my channel, but I just wanted to quickly touch on, I don't use the word dupe lightly. I adore comparing products, so I think the word dupe can be a little bit misleading, so that's why I don't use it that often, but I do think that there are similarities between products, hence this whole video. Anyway, I'm rambling, but the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector is quite a similar texture to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is a very thin texture. It doesn't have a ton of extra emollients. It sets down on the skin just a touch. It's not like a full-on set down, but it doesn't remain super tacky. It's relatively lightweight. All of these things, I think, can be said about this product as well. The 4-in-1 Perfector, again, super thin, spreads really nicely, but it's not going to feel like a heavy-duty, rich, glowy primer on the skin. I think the main difference that I found quite immediately with the Flawless Filter compared to the Perfector is that this product does not have as much pearl to it that the Charlotte Tilbury has. So this, on top of the cheekbones, it does offer a little bit of a dew to the cheeks, which I think looks really pretty, and I've used it that way before, but it doesn't really give me a highlighted effect. Also, the shade range within here is not as great as the Charlotte Tilbury, so I was able to get the lightest shade in the Charlotte Tilbury to be able to kind of truly highlight my face, and the fair shade within this is pretty much just like my skin tone. So for me, I don't really see this as being a product that you would put on top of the skin. Now that being said, to use this all over the face as just a luminous glowy product with a little bit of coverage, but it kind of just gives you that fresh skin look. This I do see in this product. And if you wanted a product to just add a light glow all over the face before you went into makeup, this will also give you that. I would say that this also does have a little bit of that airbrush touch that I notice with the Charlotte Tilbury. So again, for more all over the face use without makeup on top, with makeup on top, this is what I would recommend. And for more of a highlight product, this is what I would tend to recommend. Now, another product that I do feel like fits into this skin tone highlight primer mixing kind of product that these products are in is the Glow Lust from Auric. Now this product I think is really special because the pearl is incredibly fine. It offers just a beautiful, you know, lit from within kind of glow, but it still feels relatively hydrating on the skin. This product is a little bit more hydrating than both the Charlotte Tilbury as well as the Maybelline. It definitely kind of gives you like a skincare lotion feeling. It definitely has that kind of emollients and I in general just feel like my skin always likes when I apply this. You know, it craves this kind of texture. There are eight different shades. This is the shade Morganite. They recently added another shade to make it eight. As a whole, when I think about the Glow Lust in comparison to these other products, I find that because this has the richest texture to it, I prefer to use this as a true primer or as a mix-in product rather than on top of makeup. I just find that this offers that soft, pearly radiance to whatever tinted moisturizer I'm using, foundation, and especially as we are nearing winter, I feel like a product like this is something that I would use a lot in my routine. I would say that this pigmentation is right around the same pigmentation as the 4-in-1 Perfector from Maybelline. Again, it kind of feels like this has more, but I think it's just because of the texture, because this is a little bit thicker, but I do feel like this has a little bit more pearl to it definitely more pearl than the Maybelline. So the Charlotte Tilbury has the most pearl, Auric is next, and then the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector at the end. As for texture, the Auric is the richest, next probably Charlotte Tilbury, and then the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector. I really love all these products, and you come to find because these are all so similar, you don't need all of them, you guys. But here's the product that I think kind of inspired this video. I was so blown away by this product and I just found it to be 
really interesting. So it's the NYX Bear With Me Luminous Tinted Skin Serum. The reason why I was so blown away by this product is that it immediately started to remind me of something like the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. First tried this all over my face and I said, wow, that's a lot of glow not much coverage but i love the way it makes the quality of my skin look so even though i probably wouldn't be inclined to just use this on its own i think that nyx is on to something here also by the way this literally comes out and like a nipple packaging i mean a baby bottle nipple a very bizarre i'm not sure why they decided to go that route. But anyway, um, I really, really enjoy how glowy this product is. And it really is a glow that comes from a glassy, dewy look. So this actually has pretty much zero pearl that I notice on my skin. It really just looks like beautiful, hydrated, glassy, dewy, glowy skin. The texture I would say is right around the texture of the Auric. I would say that this one is a little bit more liquidy, but it definitely has that emollients that I think works really well for adding a nice glow to your foundation. I would say immediately this would be great for someone with dehydrated and dry skin. I love to put this over makeup just to add a little bit of a dew, but I think that this product is excellent so excellent if you just want to add a little bit of glow to your foundation just mix this in add a little bit and it just adds that plump dewy effect you don't need much and you honestly you don't get much either they do have a few different shades of this as well not as many as i would like i was so intrigued by this product because for me it felt like a tinted version of one of my holy grail items which is the Glossier Future Dew. So right away, let me come out and say that these two products perform so, so similarly on the skin. This has a tint, this does not. So, you know, take your pick there. The Glossier Future Dew, I have loved for so long. It's an oil serum hybrid, and when I put it on my skin, it just makes any texture I have go away, it imparts a beautiful glow. And I have found that if I have a foundation that is too drying for my skin, but I really want to make it work, I find that the Glossier Future Dew almost always makes it look much better. I mean, it might not be my favorite, but it's going to really drastically improve the way that it performs. If you love a dewy glow and you have not tried this product, I think for me personally, this is my favorite Glossier product that they have come out with. For me, it truly feels innovative because it's a glow that really lasts all day. It really is that lit from within fresh skincare facial look. And I am someone that really needs emollients, hydration in general, and especially going into winter. So if you're someone that you're just looking at your foundation, you're applying it and you're like, this just isn't working for me. You have more dry skin. This is the product that I would recommend. So again, we have something like the Charlotte Tilbury has a tint, but is way more pearly. We have the Auric, a little bit less pearl, more tint. Then we have the Maybelline Skin Perfector, even less pearl. Then we have the NYX Bear With Me, which is pretty much zero pearl, but we're getting a little bit more of that juicy, glowy look that comes again from a dewiness and not necessarily a pearl. And with the Glossier Future Dew, I think it's kind of interesting because, I don't know, I feel like there is a touch, a very, very minimal touch of pearl. It's not something that I notice on my skin once it's applied you're not going to see glitter you're not even really going to see a tone to it necessarily but i do feel like there is a little touch of that pearl so again i just find the nuances of these products to be super interesting but i wanted to also talk about some other products and for those of you with oily skin stick with me because i know i've been talking about a lot of products that i would say are a little bit more geared towards dry skin or dry to combination. Now in the past, I've gotten so many questions about how the Glossier Future Dew compares to 
the watermelon niacinamide dewdrops from Glow Recipe. And I think that the packaging looks the same. I mean, very, very similar at least. But these two products, this is where we kind of take a jump. These two products are not similar whatsoever. We'll say that the look of these products on the skin are pretty different. Now the Glow Recipe dewdrops are way more of a gel texture. They certainly melt into the skin beautifully the way that the Future Dew does, but feels way more like a hydrating product than an emollient moisturizing product. It does still have a touch of a slip to it, so it spreads really evenly and it really is a pleasure to apply onto the skin. It's lightweight, but it is going to add just that skincare glow, just that touch of a luminosity. And as you continue to put it onto the skin, you will notice at the very end, there is a touch of attack and it's not not an obnoxious tack to the skin either. It does help with longevity and makeup. So I just think that this has a beautiful balance that way. It's nice and hydrating, it's plumping. Again, it gives a very soft and subtle dewy look to the skin. And it does have a little bit of tack. So I feel like if you do have more oily skin or if in general, you have dry skin, but you just prefer a less emollient and rich primer, but you still, again, you still want to touch a glow. I think that this is a really, really good option. I would actually say that the product that is closer to the Glossier Future Dew, I'm pulling out these two products. These are very similar. The product that I would compare these to the most readily is the Cover FX Dewy Skin Primer. So this is incredibly, incredibly incredibly dewy. I would say maybe even more dewy than these two products. This has a little bit more slip to it as well. The Glossy Future Dew truly feels like, like I feel like the quality of my skin is always better after I take off my makeup. Like this does a really good job at keeping moisture in, keeping the hydration in. It does feel like it's really doing good for my skin. The NYX, again, gives a super similar effect to the Glossier Future Dew, but maybe just a touch less emollients. I would say the textures are actually quite similar though. Now, with the Cover FX Dewy Primer, this has zero pearl to it at all. It is completely clear. It comes out looking like a gel, but really this is an incredibly slippy product. It almost feels like a gel oil like that it feels like a gel oil rather than just an oil because it actually spreads really nicely this has quite a slip to it and when you apply it it immediately gives you glow it gives you incredible incredible dewiness incredible juiciness like if you are someone that you need to look super glossy super dewy and your skin is at the exact opposite spectrum if you put this on I can guarantee you that you will get the glow that you are after. And I have to tell you that having a product like this or these on hand, I need it. I need it in my makeup bag because I have those makeup days where my skin just needs it or my makeup's just going to look cakey. So the reason why this isn't as much of a favorite as something like the Future Dew is one, I think the Future Dew's texture feels better on the skin. I think that this can tend to feel a little bit greasier. The Future Dew is also less expensive and I do like the ingredients more than this. Last primer that I wanted to talk about is the e.l.f. Jelly Pop. I hope this doesn't seem like it's out of left field, but don't forget, we also were talking about the Glow Recipe Niacinamide Dewdrops. Again, this is not super similar to the Glossier Future Dew, but a product that I do feel like is quite similar to the Glow Recipe is this product. The e.l.f. Jelly Pop has a little bit more dew, I would say, than the Glow Recipe, and it also is just a little bit more tacky. It feels a little bit more sticky, to be honest, but if you are looking for a dewy primer that is going to really, really stick on the foundation, if you want that stick, this will absolutely give it to you. There is still enough of um, a spreadability to this. There are some sticky, sticky primers that don't 
give you enough spread when you apply it onto the skin. This one feels very hydrating. So again, good for oily skin because you are going to get the hydration that you want to make your makeup, you know, apply really nicely and glide really prettily on the skin. It's going to give you that touch of a glow, but Again, it's going to leave you with a tack. And when you don't need as much moisture, a product like this with hydration is probably a better way to go than a product with more moisturizing ingredients. I don't know why I said it that weird. So again, you can kind of see how I got down this rabbit hole. So I want to do a recap for you because I think that that is going to be helpful. Now first, let's start off again with those tinted, glowy, hybrid makeup items we're getting back to this arena. So if you are looking for a highlight product that is going to give you a really pearly, fresh, natural finish, but with a skin tone color, this is what I would recommend. The Hollywood Flawless Filter I think is by far the best. Do I think it's the best primer we've talked about? No, I don't really use this to prep my skin a lot. For me, it really is what is going to give me that step up on the tops of my cheekbones, give me a touch of that filtered look. It is really, really beautiful for that. And I still use it all the time. Now, if you want something very similar to the Flawless Filter, but you want something that you can use all over the face or as a mix-in product, that is when I would recommend the Auric because I feel like the Auric is great for mixing into foundation. It's going to give you that really dewy, fresh look to your skin. It does have a little bit more pigment to it as well. So I can see you being able to use this all over the face with a concealer more so than I could see you doing it with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Probably the product that I think is the closest to being a product that you can just wear all over the face a little bit of concealer, it would probably be the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector or the NYX Bear With Me. These two products are quite similar, I would say. So the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector, I think has a very, very slight touch of pearl. It's almost kind of indistinguishable on the skin, but this texture is much thinner. It's super easy to apply, but as an all over glowy, just really easy, fresh looking makeup product, I do think that this one is really beautiful and I do like that it does have that little, little touch of blur. I also think that the 4-in-1 Perfector, because it's so thin, it's better for a variety of skin types than something like the NYX Bear With Me will be. Now the NYX Bear With Me, same deal as the Maybelline 4-in-1 Perfector. You get that touch of pigment and that touch of coverage, but this is a little bit richer. It has a little bit more dew and glow. I wouldn't say that this gives me an airbrushed look, but I will say that something that this gives me that, that these products don't necessarily give me is that if I really, really need my skin to look super glowy, like if I am dealing with major dehydration, I can really depend on a product like this to plump up my skin and make sure that my makeup is going to look really fresh. But the NYX just does an incredible job of giving you that really high glass, glossy looking skin with that touch of tint. So again, I use this as a mix in, as a product kind of to prep the skin and then put foundation on top. I use it for all of that. I have used it again for highlight as well. Not my favorite product to use for a highlight. And this is very, very similar to the Glossy Future Do. Again, if you are someone that needs moisture, your skin craves it, your makeup looks cakey, you can't figure out why, try this. I think that it really is one of the best primers out there if you are looking for a glassy, glowing looking base. You could also try the Dewy Primer from Cover FX. This is going to give you a very, very similar look. And if you prefer a gel oil texture to an oil serum kind of texture, then you will probably prefer that one. And if you want a little bit more attack, you really want your makeup to last longer, go with the Jelly Pop. This is going to really help your makeup stick and it's still going to give you that touch of glow. No pearl in here at all, just straight kind of glow. But if you want kind of a step down, something that's a little bit more subtle, Watermelon Glow, Nice and Amide Dew Drops will definitely give that to you. And I do find that this is more of an elegant texture. You know, it feels a little bit more like skincare because I mean, it is skincare, but yeah, 
I hope this video was helpful. I know I was rambling a little bit, but if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed all the different comparisons, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know. I will leave everything on my face as well as all the products that we talked about in today's video down below. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.